Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are back at it with tricks for lyrics. We are talking about bass lines today, which are uh, incredibly important for lyrics. Uh, if you watch the expression category, you might have a, a good idea about what these things are, but um, they exist in the expression tool, the chord tool, and the lyrics tool, which I think they're uh, incredibly important in the lyrics tool. Now, the bass line is basically where the lyrics are going to sit below uh, any given staff on any given system. And uh, we get uh, four little triangles which will dictate where those bass lines are. And we can move these triangles in different ways to get different results. Different triangles will do different things, which I'll get into. Now, with lyric bass lines, every single verse and every single chorus and every single section has its own independent bass line. So if you switch verses, uh, you're going to get a different uh, bass line set. You can see that it just jumped down uh, for verse 2. Uh, also, the only way to access the bass lines in lyrics is in the type and score tool. So if you're in one of these other tools, you won't be able to manipulate those bass lines. So you do have to be in the type and score tool in order to get to these bass lines in lyrics. So let's talk about these triangles, because this is where the, all the magic happens. The f very first triangle, all the way on the left, um, this will control the bass line for any given verse, chorus, or section on all staffs, all systems, for the score and the parts in both page and scroll view. So it's sort of the master setting for this particular verse. In this case, I'm in verse 1. So if I move this left triangle up a little bit, if I can grab it, there we go, you'll see that the, uh, the lyric moves up for verse 1 for all the soprano, alto, tenor, bass parts uh, on every single, um, on every single uh, system there. And it will also appear that way in each part as well. You can see the soprano, alto, tenor, bass uh, linked parts are like that as well. All right, so that's sort of like the master control uh, for any given verse. The second triangle will control the bass lines for this specific staff um, across the whole, across all systems for b both the score and the parts and both page and scroll view, right? So if I choose, if I move that second triangle now, you'll only see the soprano bass lines for verse 1 move upwards. The alto tenor and bass line will remain the same, and the soprano part will also have that bass line adjustment as well, as you can see there, but the alto part will not, because I didn't adjust the alto-specific uh, staff bass line, right? So the, first and the second uh, triangle there is specific to the staff that you're uh, currently looking at. The third triangle is the triangle that will control the baseline for this staff only for this system uh, and only for this part and in page view only. So it will not affect anything in scroll view. Uh, so this is sort of where you're going to do most of your local work in terms of making adjustments on a system by system, staff by staff basis is with this third triangle. And again, if I move this third triangle up, all you're going to see is the soprano line move uh, in, in the score here, the alto tenor bass is left alone, and the second system is also left alone. So it's just a sort of localized bass line shift. And in the soprano part, the linked part doesn't move either, right? So it's just for that specific uh, uh, score or part that you're viewing. In fact, you can have different settings between the score and the part if you need to. Which makes sense because this is a system-wide adjustment, and sometimes your systems are going to be set differently with different numbers of bars between the score and the part. So that makes sense that that's how that functions. The fourth triangle, um, I call this the useless baseline triangle. <laughs> the fourth triangle, the only purpose it serves is to change the baseline for the next entered lyric. So what that means is that, you know, it will literally only do anything if you're about to type something in. So I just re uh, remove those last two lyrics in verse 1. And if I move that fourth bass line up, uh, and now I type in here the words I see, you'll see that it will just move those uh, lyrics up a little bit, right? And it's literally just making sort of manual adjustments to the height of those lyrics. That's, that's really all it's doing. In fact, I can go back here and move this fourth triangle back to its original position, and it doesn't, re it doesn't move those back to its original position, right? It's just sort of making manual adjustments. And in fact, using the um, adjust syllables tool here, we get those um, uh, handles again on each syllable. If we right-click, we can choose clear manual position, and it will return it back to the normal baseline, uh, just like that. So uh, that fourth triangle really is only a, sort of a temporary 
um, manual adjustment that's made as you type uh, in, in your lyrics. Uh, it has no really other profound effect beyond that. Um, one other thing to know about some of these bass lines, and particularly the first and second bass line, and I actually learned this really not too long ago, so this is uh, interesting to me as well. If you right-click the first or second bass line, this will not uh, work for the third or fourth bass line, just right-click the first bass line, you can actually unlink this uh, bass line from the parts. So now when you make a movement, let's go with the second bass line here and choose unlink. Now when you make that movement for the soprano, for the whole soprano staff, as you know, it will move the bass line for the soprano only staff and all the systems. It actually won't make that adjustment in the parts because I've unlinked them uh, or I've unlinked that particular bass line. If I choose relink in all parts, now when I go back to that soprano part, you'll see that that bass line adjustment will uh, conform to the way it was in the score. Uh, so that's uh, interesting that you can unlink and relink those those first two triangles like that. All right, let's just go and undo all of that. In addition to being able to you know, manually move these uh, bass lines around, in the lyrics tool only, this doesn't exist in the expression or the chord tool, we have an option in the lyrics menu for adjust bass lines. Uh, and this is a, a handy little utility that will allow us to be a little bit more specific and more finite with the, the adjustments that we're making. And we can make adjustments to the verse, chorus, or section, and then whichever number we choose here, we'll see different offsets, uh, offset numbers here. Now, for verse 1, chorus 1, section 1, the way that Finale has this set up out of the box is negative 0.5 for the piece. That The piece baseline is the very first baseline. And the, uh, the, the reference point here, the zero, uh, an offset of zero would be the middle line of the staff, by the way. So what uh, Finale is doing is putting it 0.5 of an inch below the middle line of the staff. And as you go up in the numbers here, so we're going to go to verse 2, that you'll see that the piece offset is a little bit lower. So that's why the verse 2 uh, baseline is lower, verse 3 is lower than that, etc. And um, it actually will sort of follow a... Uh, a pattern of um, addition here. So 0 0.5 to 0.66 to 0.833, sort of following a, a pattern of, of equidistant uh, baselines. So we have some more adjustments with this. So if we wanted to make this piece adjustment just a little bit smaller, or the make the offset a little bit smaller, we can choose 0.4 here. And what you'll see is that it will move that first triangle up a little bit, uh, just like that. Now, go back to here. Uh, so that's the piece offset. The second box here is the staff offset. And uh, again, that would be equivalent to the second b uh, tr baseline triangle here. And from with this baseline offset, we can choose either the soprano, the alto, the tenor, or the bass part um, to choose an extra offset here. Uh, now, by default, there will be no offsets for this, but you can choose an extra offset um, uh, manually in the same way that you would do uh, a move like that with the uh, triangles. The third box here is for staff system specific baselines. And you can see that currently staff system one is selected. Now this is the third triangle. Again, this is where all the, the where all your local baseline adjustments will be made. And you can do them uh, you know, more in a more finite way uh, with this box right here. And you can choose sy system one, system two, all the way up. You can keep going and you know as many systems as you have. And interesting if you go if you keep going previous here before we'll get a global setting which will actually create a uh, a third triangle baseline shift across the entire score which is interesting so we could actually put in uh, negative 0.2 here and uh, what you'll get is this uh, this uh, actually it's a second triangle that, that does it um, which is sort of the same thing as the uh, doing the, the baseline shift for the the staff um, but that's that's how you would do that and then going previous before global, special part extraction has something very specific to specific to do with the TG tools, which I won't really get into because it's it's a little bit um, uh, specific and complicated. But um, and then we can have a, sp a special uh, offset for scroll view for even s different staff sets in scroll view. So you can actually set these baselines different in different staff sets, which is interesting. Uh, there's one for studio view. And if you go before that, we get to staff system 32,767, 766, et cetera. So I guess uh, maybe there is a, a limit in finale to how many staff systems you can have, which would some be somewhere around 32,767 exactly. So 
uh, there is that. All right, so that's how this adjust baseline uh, dialog box works. It's incredibly um, useful uh, if you kind of know what you're doing. There is another um, interesting aspect to this uh, called the set piece offsets to default font option. Now this is really handy because uh, you know it has two uses sort of. So I'll show you what the first one is. If you decide that you know all of your lyrics are too close to the staff, like let's say I wanted everything to move down, you know obviously you could go through and move the bass lines for verse one. If you had a bunch of verses, you'd have to move them equidistant for each verse, right? Well, with this set piece offsets to default font, what we could do is actually just set the uh, first offset for for uh, verse one here. So we change that to point six. And then what this will do is it will calculate the rest of the verses proportionally. So if I go to verse number two, now we've got 0.76. Before this was 0.66. And uh, verse three, this is actually a little bit lower than it used to be um, by probably 0.1 because it's, it's calculating um, uh, proportionally. And you, then you click OK, and you'll see that everything will move down all at once, which is an incredibly handy uh, little feature. And it will only... Um, it will only calculate off of the first verse. So whatever setting, whatever offset you have here for the piece in the first verse, the first course of the verse section, when you set these piece offsets to default font, um, it will move all at once. The second use for this, by the way, um, I'm going to talk about changing fonts in Finale, but when you do change fonts, and particularly if you change font size, uh, you know, you could run into a situation where the size of the font is now going to make the second verse overlap with the first verse just because you've made it too big and now, you know, there's no room in between the verses. So when you set the piece offsets to default font, what Finale will do is actually calculate the distance needed for, um, for, for a proper line spacing between verse 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, based on the size of the font and the font itself because the fonts themselves actually have a little bit different uh, height, um, even at different point sizes. So um, it's sort of an automatic way to re reset all of these piece offsets for uh, verse, chorus, and sections uh, beyond number one, if that makes sense. So I want to give you some more uh, practical uses for the baseline shifts. And I I've set up a different type of file here. It's the same song, but it's sort of a different uh, arrangement. And you can see I've got the first and second verses here with only two staffs now, soprano, alto, tenor, bass con uh, combined here. And then I've got a more complicated situation below with some polyphonic writing where I'm going to use different lyrics uh, for different parts. So I'm going to show you how to use the bass lines to do something like that. First of all, you can see uh, off the bat, you know, with the lyric bass lines, when, you, when you're putting lyrics between uh, a, a choral system like this, obviously you're going to want to be able to center it a little bit more. So actually I'm going to use exactly what I just did, uh, what I just showed you in the adjust bass lines. I'm going to put this at 0.6 and I'm going to set piece offsets to match uh, that and that should at center it more. So that's the first thing that we can do. All right. Now these, uh, uh, now these lyrics here are typed into verses one and two. I'm going to go down here to the second part, which uh, I'll consider verse three, and I'm going to set up something a little bit differently um, using not the verses, but the choruses. All right. So uh, just kind of follow along with what I'm doing. So first of all, I'm going to switch over to chorus one here, and I'm going to start entering lyrics into the alto line actually so let's start with that and now again with um with when you're using uh, multiple layers you do have to make sure that you're in the proper layer in order to attach the lyrics to that to those notes so i'm gonna switch over to layer two and we're going to type in chorus one all right so which would give us under there and we're going to type some words here just some ooze and i won't go through this whole thing but uh, you get the idea. I'll show you a finished finished product product in a minute. Now, because I'm, what I've decided to do is I'm only going to use chorus one for the alto line in layer two right here. So what I can do is actually change the entire piece offset, which is the first one, so that it sort of works for this down stem alto part uh, in layer two. So put it somewhere around there, and you can see that my ooze are going to be okay. And as I keep going, that lyric bass line uh, should work for most of the alto part. Okay, so that I've got set, set up for chorus one. Uh, for chorus two, I'm going to use for the bass part, which is going to be similar. Uh, just type in some more ooze here. 
etc. And you can see how that will work. How I could continue to go, but I'll stop for a moment. And uh, we can make an adjustment to the piece offset for chorus two a little bit if we want. Maybe that looks okay. Uh, and we'll go with that. And the you know the one thing about uh, the bass lines is that they don't always have to go below the staff. We can actually put the bass lines above the staff. So for the above the staff lyrics, which I'm going to put the soprano and the tenor lines above the staff here, I'm going to use section. Now I'm really only using chorus and section just so I can help myself delineate between uh, what's what. So now I know that anytime I need lyrics above the staff, I'll I'll go into the section part here, and I'm going to click on uh, soprano. And by default, it's going to put the uh, bass line below the staff because that's where uh, it normally would. But all we have to do is just drag it all the way up here to be above the staff. And handily, it gives you that little gray line going across. So you can si sort of eyeball a good location for that bass line. All right. And so now when I click on that note, of course, you do have to be in the proper layer, right? Because now I'm entering notes, uh, lyrics on layer one. So make sure you switch to layer one. And now we can enter lyrics here. I'll just enter a few of them for right now. All right, and you can see I can keep going if I really wanted to. Um, maybe maybe that needs to be a little bit closer. That's great, all right? Uh, so that is section one, and I'll use section two for the tenor line. So we can start down here again in layer one, and just to b off the bat, I'm gonna move that bass line all the way up, get it all the way up out of the way, and click on that B there, and we can start typing uh, in the tenor part. Etc. So this is how you, you'd sort of do something like this. And I've already finished this uh, little arrangement here. I'm just going to go over to the other file that I have that has a finished version of this so you can sort of see what it looks like. And you can kind of see how now I've got all of the, um, the lyrics that I need for the soprano above, the tenor above, uh, the alto below, and the bass below. So uh, that's sort of a how you would use those bass lines in, in a scenario like this. All right, For me, I'm using different choruses and sections and verses. The verses I'm, I'm re uh, retaining for uh, this in between, these in between verses uh, at the beginning, right? But then I'm using chorus and sections uh, in a different way uh, just to put them in different places uh, above and below the staff, all right? So uh, yeah, so that's the, 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 the just behind uh, bass lines. Hopefully that makes some sense now. Uh, bass lines are an important part of lyrics, so now you've got some tools to work with them. So. All right, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, come back, and we'll start talking about some other things having to do with the Lyric Tool. And until then, I will see you later.